Our Tawak took shot at Tawak Garda Mukri, Agsnis Tawak to Garda Cream Winter Nagalyeva, Agus Gahoria, Nahor, a Taig Fallings, or Lista Fehiv, Agus Er Trollies. I do spot of Watlam Co Gorgigus, a Yenif, Don Aranua, Agus Guiam Gotharat Ort, either Roll Nua. Kahirli, thank you for the opportunity of making a statement on health. And I have to say, it's something that is very close to my heart, but more importantly to the people of Galway and indeed the country and the patients who are on waiting lists, who are on trolleys and who have not got a health service. And I actually, I know people and um, deputies have complimented the minister and I really would like to be positive, but I despair of such statements as universal health care is not just something to implement, but is a direction and a journey. It is not a journey, it is not a direction, it is a basic human right to have public health. It is a basic human right to walk into a hospital and be treated with dignity and respect. And not to be sitting on a trolley for three and four days. And indeed, even on an economic basis, it is nonsense to make elderly people sit on trolleys. The research clearly points out that somebody over the age of 70 on a trolley for two days will inevitably spend a longer period of time in hospital and therefore costing more. So even on an economic level, we have no choice but to do something about our creaking health system. And I've had the privilege in a long career in local politics of sitting on the Regional Health Forum, along with 39 other dedicated councillors from Donegal down to Tipperary. And we and I were more than familiar with the health services and its inadequacies. And we could come in here in every debate and point out to the long waiting lists, and I can tell you they're extraordinarily long in Galway. At any given time, we have up to 30,000 patients on an outpatient waiting list waiting for basic, basic health services. And on an in-service, that figure varies from 5 to 9,000. And you have to ask the question then, why is our health service creaking at the seams? And why are we in a position here where we're now establishing a committee consequent on many, many reports up to, up to now, and still we're in trouble with our health system. And I want to pay tri a tribute to Deputy Shartall for her initiative, and I have no difficulty in supporting the initiative in relation to the committee. However, I do have some concerns in the direction that that committee might take in spending time looking at models of funding for a health service, rather than on making the health service accountable and available for all our people. And in my opinion, in contrast to the Minister, I don't think funding is difficult at all. Funding for our health service comes from our taxes. And when I knocked on doors, I didn't meet one single person who wanted their taxes reduced. They wanted a health service. And so I don't know why we need to go down a route of looking at funding. I would hope the committee would look at how to make the health service available as quickly as possible and that they would listen to the people on the front line, the nurses who have never been listened to, the cleaners, the porters and then the consultants in relation to how to improve our health service. And if I look and analyse what has happened in my time as a councillor and particularly on the Regional Health Forum, in 2006, in the height of the Celtic Tiger, there were cutbacks. Only the language was different. They talked about bed refurbishment measures in 2006 to justify beds and wards closure in Merlin Park Hospital and in the Regional Hospital and cost containment measures. And indeed then we had many, many failed initiatives and again, I actually despair when Fianna Fáil come up and champion the National Treatment Purchase Fund. We've had, at least in my time, four failed initiatives without any analysis of the fundamental problems. We had the co-location of the private hospitals on public lands, led by the former minister, Mary Harney. And it took all our effort in Galway to fight that appalling initiative where we will co-locate a private hospital on public lands. Then we had the National Treatment Purchase Fund, which in effect channeled public money into private hospitals to keep the private for profit hospitals making a profit while at the same time depleting our public health system. And then on top of that, we got the special delivery unit and we got a special man in Galway for three years on a special salary to deliver that special delivery unit. Again, channeling private public money into private hospitals, allowing waiting lists to build up and then paying public money to treat the public patients in a private for-profit hospital. And again, at the, 
I apologise if I'm parochial in relation to Galway, but it is the microcosm of what's happening in the, in the country. And only last week there was an announcement that two DXA scanners were closed last Friday. Vital pieces of diagnostic equipment in relation to the diagnosis of osteoporosis simply closed because there was no staff. And we had the professor speaking out in relation to that, and we have the embarrassment of ho hosting a conference in Galway on that very topic, and we cannot use the DEXA scanners. I've heard indirectly that some effort was made and that one of them is opened again. However, the fundamental problem in relation to lack of staff has gone unanswered. And while the minister tells us there's no embargo and while in his speech he appeals to the health executive to employ further staff we have the health executive making a statement that they cannot employ any extra staff at Cahirly until three go out and one comes in and so we go from crisis to crisis and again last week I placed a question in relation to a new public hospital in Galway not of my own bat, but because the clinical director of the Reek Hospital in Galway, which serves the region, has said that a new hospital is absolutely necessary and that we must begin planning for it. And so, in, under the new politics and the new atmosphere prevailing in this stall, I tabled a question to say, in view of the clinical director's statement, what did the minister intend to do or what steps did he intend to take? And what I got back was civil service speak. And again, I place no blame on the civil servants. The minister is paid a very good salary to deal with questions put. And he needs sidestepped that question and continued on in the old politics in the guise of new politics. I find that unacceptable at Cahirly. I would have thought he would have addressed, and I'm sorry he's not here, he would have addressed the serious issue that lack of capacity in Galway is the top quite the top uh, factor on the risk category. That's a very serious statement. The congested site in Galway, he said, is simply firefighting with each additional building. And I listed out the buildings, and they have to go up, and he acknowledged that they are simply firefighting, and it's past time to plan for a hospital in Merlin Park, where we have 150 acres of land. And so, we, when we were elected, we all, every single deputy in this stall received a letter and there are very good consultants out there. And one of them took the opportunity to write into us all. He didn't ask for his name to remain a secret, so I'm going to quote it, Mr. Peter O'Rourke in Donegal. And he took the trouble of writing a two-page letter to all of us, and then he gave us a document, and he highlighted how now practical solutions can be used pending the, the decision of the committee. That hasn't been mentioned by the Minister. He received a copy of that, as did all of the TDs in Fine Gael. And he makes very, very practical suggestions in relation to medical day units, five-day wards, diagnostic services, access to simple x-rays. And if these measures were implemented, it would reduce the situation pertaining in Galway and on every other hospital throughout the country. On top of that, and later on I'll be talking on mental health. Every single month in Galway, 300 patients, including patients suffering from mental health problems, simply leave accident and emergency because they will not be seen and they walk out lacking the patience to wait. And nobody could have patience to wait the amount of time that you have to wait in Galway, notwithstanding the best efforts of the staff. So on a monthly basis, we have 300 people walking out of accident and emergency because there is no service available. On top of that, we have people with mental health problems trying to access a congested site, trying to access an overworked department of psychiatry, going through accident and emergency. Now, I would think that we all have to ask ourselves a question here. Which of us would like to do that? It is okay to make fine speeches in the doll, but which TD here today would like, if they were suffering from mental health problems, or their wife or their children, to have to go through a packed emergency accident and emergency department? Which TD here today has spent time on a trolley? I haven't. Which, what other TD has spent time on a trolley? That would guide the direction of the conversation and the urgency of recognising that a universal healthcare 
is a right, not a journey, not a decision, but a right. And I will happily work with the committee if they're looking at implementing that right as a matter of urgency and dealing in a practical way with the problems and okay. listen to the people who know best. Thank you.